Hi everyone. Today, in Chapter 1, Introduction to Aquatic Pollution, I will give general info about an overview of aquatic pollution. Before we go deeper, what makes the Earth different from other planets? The answer is the Earth has water. Water is essential for life and the most precious substance. We as humans can survive for weeks without food, but only a few days without water. Marine and aquatic environments are the homes of a diverse array of organisms. A lot of species can be found in these environments compared to land environments. Without water, these organisms would not survive. Water is also needed for agriculture activities, industry, such as cooling agents, transportation, such as shipping industry, and a host of other human uses, such as for recreation activities. Nearly all the world's water is the oceans. Around 97.6% is ocean water, and only 2.4% is freshwater. There are three main components from the freshwater component, ice, and snow, 87.2%, groundwater, 12%, and fresh surface only, 0.8%. From the fresh surface, there are few components. And only the freshwater lakes, and reservoirs is the biggest component, 45.7%. If we make a comparison, only about 0.02% of the world's water is in a form accessible to humans and organisms that rely on freshwater. Freshwater shortage, clean drinking water, and basic sanitation are necessary to prevent communicable diseases and to maintain a healthy life, especially for humans. For many of the world's poorest people, one of the greatest environmental threats to health remains the continued use of polluted water for daily activities, such as cooking. For example, in Mali country, about 88% of the population lacks clean water. In Ethiopia, more worst, 94% of the total population. Survey shows that more than two-thirds of the world's households have to fetch water from outside the home, mean that they do not have a water supply in their house. Or basically, we can say that they don't have clean water. Let's learn about pollution. Two types of definition. The first one is a simple definition. Pollution can be mean by environmental damage caused by wastes discharged into the aquatic system. The second one is a complex definition, introduction by humans, directly or indirectly, of substances or energy into aquatic environment, including rivers, lakes, estuaries, and seas, which resulting in such deleterious effects such as harmful to living resources, hazards to human health, hindrance to aquatic activities including fishing, impairment of quality for the use of water, and reduction of amenities. Water pollution is any contamination of water with chemicals or other foreign substances that are detrimental to human, plant, or animal health. These pollutants include fertilizers, pesticides from agricultural runoff, sewage, food processing waste, lead, mercury, and other heavy metals, chemical wastes from industrial discharges, and chemical contamination from hazardous waste sites. Virtually, all types of water pollution are harmful to the health of humans and animals. Water pollution may not damage our health immediately when we consume, but can be harmful after long-term exposure. Different forms of pollutants can affect the health of animals in different ways. We can say, that all the waters in the world are affected by pollution. The highest mountain streams have been impacted by acid rain. Pollutants are added from these mountains' starting points, and spread throughout the watershed to areas, where the rivers flow into the sea. 
the aquatic ecosystem, such as lakes, groundwater, and wetlands, are all affected by either point or non-point source pollution. Type of pollutant Litter left behind or carelessly tossed away chemicals such as pesticides and fertilizers and oil-based products seeping into the watersheds from industry and pleasure vehicles all impact the marine and aquatic environments. Runoff from highways, parking lots, city streets, bridges, and heavily populated coastal areas, is washed into nearby watersheds, and adds its detrimental effects to the ecosystem. Until approximately 50 years ago, most pollution was not seen in our oceans, since it was comprised mainly of metal, and glass, which sinks to the bottom, and paper, and cloth, which decay in a short period. Today, Pollution is more visible because many of the manufactured objects are made of plastics, which are lightweight, strong, and very durable. Not only do plastics as they are commonly produced, degrade slowly, but some animals see plastics as food, and ingest them, or they become entangled in them. In either case, the result is usually death. These photos show some of the impacts of nowadays pollutants, to the ocean and coastal area, as well as to marine organisms. Heavy metals, from industrial processes, can accumulate in nearby lakes, and rivers. These are toxic to marine life, such as fish, and shellfish, and subsequently to the humans, who eat them. Heavy metals, can slow development, result in birth defects, and some metals are carcinogenic, which mean, that they can cause cancer. Industrial waste, released by the industry processing process, often contains many toxic compounds, that damage aquatic animals' health, and those who eat them. Some of the toxins in industrial waste, may only have a mild effect whereas other can be fatal. They can cause immune suppression, reproductive failure, or acute poisoning depend on what type of industry. Microbial pollutants, from sewage often result in infectious diseases that infect aquatic life, and terrestrial life, through drinking water. Microbial water pollution, is a major problem in the developing world, with diseases such as cholera, and typhoid fever, being the primary cause of infant mortality. Some this situation also happens in developing countries. Organic matter and nutrients cause an increase in aerobic algae and deplete oxygen levels from the water column. This causes the suffocation of fish and other aquatic organisms. And lastly, maybe the entire population will be removed. Besides that, sulfate particles from acid rain can cause harm to the health of marine life in the rivers, and lakes it contaminates, and can result in mortality. This is some of the effects of acid rain. The old sculpture around the world had been destroyed due to corrosion. Not only sculpture, some of the important ancient buildings also had been destroyed. For example, the Rome Colosseum. Suspended particles in fresh water, reduce the quality of drinking water, for humans, and the aquatic environment for marine life. Suspended particles, can often reduce the amount of sunlight penetrating the water, disrupting the growth of photosynthetic plants, and microorganisms. Not all pollution are harmful to the environment, especially in the ocean. Some pollution, might be benefiting the marine ecosystem. For example, nutrient, if discharged, in a certain dose or concentration, especially from the river, can act as fertilizer for the aquatic plants. Somehow, in high concentrations, this contaminant can harm marine organisms, as well as aquatic plants. What happens next, the organism will die. After pollution, 
let me explain about pollutants. Pollutant can be defined as substances which are toxic to aquatic organisms and humans. If the concentration is low in the water, it may not be toxic. However, when it approaches a certain level or above the ambient level, it may become toxic and kill the organisms. There are two types of pollutants in our modern society. The first one is introducing substances that are already present in the aquatic ecosystem, such as chemical nutrients. For example, phosphorus and nitrogen. The second one is introducing substances which are new to the environment, such as radioactive wastes, detergents, and pesticides. Normally when we talk about pollutants, we will talk about emerging pollutant. Historically, these pollutants have not been considered as such, but might be present in the environment on a global scale. Or any chemical or microorganism that is not commonly monitored in the environment, but has the potential to enter the environment and cause known or suspected adverse ecological or human health effects to the environment. For example, some of the pollutants also from your homes, such as pharmaceuticals waste, personal care products, PCPs such as shampoo or facial cleanser, endocrine disrupting compounds, EDCs, trace metals, food additives, and detergent to wash your cloth. There are three categories of a pollutant based on the concentration. The first one is ambient level, or known as background level. The ambient level is defined as a natural occurring level found in the environment. For example, ambient water dissolve oxygen in Rudang Island is 5 mg per liter, and the ambient concentration of ammonium is 0.05 micromole. The second one is contamination level. The level of concentration is higher than the ambient level, but no obvious deteriorate effect is found on the organisms or environment. Water DO in Redang Island decreases to 4 mg per liter, and ammonium increases to 0.2 micromole. The third one is pollution level. The level of concentration is much higher than the ambient level. It causes harmful effects, such as mortality or disease, to the organisms, or bad effects to the environment. Water DO of Redang Island decreases to 2 mg per liter, and ammonium increases to 5 micromole. What is the difference between these three categories of the pollutant? Ambient level. The water quality of the aquatic systems is good. Physical chemical parameters are at ambient level. Organisms are living happily in the ecosystem. Contamination level. The level of the toxic chemicals are increasing and higher, and the ambient level, no effect on the organism yet. Pollution level. Level of the toxic chemical approach to the level, which starts to have an effect on the organism, chronic and acute effects are appearing in the environment. We can see some of the organisms start dying. Various types of pollutants can be identified as follows. Disposal of domestic sewage, industrial, and agriculture waste. Deliberate and operation discharge of shipborne pollutants. Interference with the marine environment from the exploration and exploitation of marine material. Disposal of radioactive waste from the uses of nuclear energy. Military use for the ocean. They are using the ocean as their testing ground. There are several categories of pollutant. The first one is biodegradable wastes. This waste can be degraded in natural processes, or it can be broken down by microorganisms or other living things. The oxidative process, and ultimately break down organic compounds to stable inorganic compounds, such as carbon dioxide, H2O and ammonia. For example, urban sewage. 
agricultural waste, food processing waste, chemical. The second one is non-biodegradable wastes, or conservative wastes. Most of this waste is either non-degradable, or degrade only very slowly in the natural environment. Non-degradable pollutants accumulate, and are often biologic magnified, as they move in the biochemical cycle, and long food chain. For example, aluminium cans, mercurial salts, long chain chemicals and DDT. Heavy metals such as mercury, copper, lead, zinc. Halogenated hydrocarbons, DDT chlorinated hydrocarbon pesticides, PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls. The third one is solid wastes. This waste includes, inert solid wastes include litter from man-made plastics, polythene containers, nylon ropes, fishing gear, polystyrene. Plastic, is a large amount and danger of solid waste. Plastic is not biodegradable. Sea turtles mistake plastic bags for jellyfish, and die from internal blockages. For example, dredging spoil, mining waste, industrial waste, powdered ash, fly ash, from power stations, and clay waste. What is the source of these pollutants to the environment? There are two sources of pollutants, point sources, and non-point sources. Point sources of pollution occur when harmful substances are emitted directly into a body of water. It can refer to the discharge of pollutants from a discernible or identified, confined, and discrete conveyance, such as a pipe, conduit, channel, or tunnel. For example, sewage pipes, open forest burning, factories effluents. Oil spill best illustrates a point source of water pollution in the ocean, or other aquatic environment. Non-point sources are known as diffused sources. Non-point source delivers pollutants indirectly through environmental changes. Just now, the point source is directly discharged. Non-point type is when fertilizer from a field is carried into a stream, by rain, in the form of runoff, which in turn affects aquatic life. Pertains to the input of pollutants from dispersed, diffuse, and uncontrolled sources such as general surface runoff, groundwater seepage, and atmospheric fallout. For example, acid rains, haze, particles in the air. Let's focus on the source of pollutant in the ocean. The first one is direct outfalls. The most obvious inputs of material to the sea are through pipes discharging directly into it. The urban and industrial wastes are discharged directly into the estuary without treatment, become foul, stinking. Coastal mariculture. Direct input of unconsumed feed, fish excrete, pesticides to the inshore or coastal waters. The second one is river inputs. River flow via their estuaries to the sea. The river water normally contains organic wastes and the organic load entering the sea from upstream. The pesticides and fertilizer from agriculture and forestry along the river were also washed off by rain. The petroleum and oil, washed from roads by rain enter the sewerage system and storm water carry them into rivers, and lastly to the sea. Shipping activities. We know that ships carry many toxic substances such as oil, liquefied natural gas, pesticides, industrial chemicals. Shipwrecks and ship accidents at sea may release these substances. For example, oil tanker wrecks. The oily ballast water and bilge water and cargo tank washings during the ship operation also release pollutants to the marine environment. The other type is offshore inputs. 
A verity of material is dumped at sea in designated dumping grounds. Dredging spoil from shipping channels particularly, from industrialized estuaries may contain heavy metals, and other contaminants barged out to sea, and dumped. Offshore industrial activities such as oil exploration and minerals mining, also contribute pollutants to the marine environment. Next, atmospheric inputs. Pollutants that discharges to the atmosphere are returned to the land, or the sea in the rain, or if particulate in nature as fallout. Gaseous wastes can dissolve directly in the sea at its surface, the vehicle exhausts also containing leaded petrol, and the volcanic activity, and burning fossil fuels such as coal, can release mercury to the atmosphere. How about aquatic pollution in Malaysia? The major pollutants in Malaysia are domestic sewage, nutrient, nitrogen, and phosphorus, loading to the rivers, estuaries and coastal waters. This pollutant can cause eutrophication. This waste contains heavy metals, oil and suspended particles, toxicity to organisms, especially benthic organisms. Besides that, the waste also contains pathogenic microorganisms, which can outbreak human diseases. The second one is siltation, or known as suspended particles. This suspended particle can suffocate organisms, especially benthic organisms. Why? Because these benthic organisms are anchoring themselves at a specific area. And they cannot move to another area, if pollution occurs in their habitat. Next, industrial wastes. Industrial waste, normally contains heavy metals, organic solvents, toxic organic, and inorganic chemicals, acids and alkaline. Some of these wastes are highly toxic to aquatic organisms, and will cause high mortality to organisms and contaminated the food chains. Once if the food chain is contaminated, it is very difficult to expel out. Next is agriculture wastes such as, pesticides and nutrients. Pesticides are the most toxic chemicals, especially to fish. The short-term and long-term effects of pesticides, will cause great damage to our aquatic resources. Normally this pollutant can enter the aquatic environment via surface runoff. The other pollutants are petroleum hydrocarbons. The hydrocarbons, especially aromatic fractions, are highly toxic to organisms, and the oil-contaminated seafoods may cause cancer to consumers. What is the difference between chronic and acute effects? Chronic effect. The level of the toxic chemical is at slash below sub-lethal level. No mortality of the organism is observed. Some effects on the physiology, such as reduce of growth rate and egg hatching rates, and diseases are found. Long-term effects. Some organisms are extinct from the environment after some time. For the acute effect, the level of toxic chemicals further increases to a lethal level. In this state, organisms are starting to die in the water. Short-term effects. Mass mortality of organisms are usually observed in a short time. Chronic toxicity, or sublethal effects. The concentration of a toxic chemical that is insufficient to kill the organisms, but may have a devastating effect on the organism's population over a period. Finally, remove the entire population of that organism in the environment. For example, DDT can cause reproduction failure of fish-eating birds. The birds eat fish contaminated with DDT. Then the birds will lay thin shell eggs. And this thin shell will failure in hatching. This is one example where the entire population of that organism, in the environment, will be removed or extinct. How can the DDT uptake by the birds? When the DDT enter the aquatic environment, the primary organisms, phytoplankton, will uptake the pollutant. 
Due to the biomagnification process, the pollutants will be transferred to another trophic level, zooplankton to the small fish, then to bigger fish, and lastly consumed by birds. If we eat the birds, the pollutants will be uptake by us. What is the effect of physiology and growth caused by contaminants? Some toxic chemicals in sublethal levels may adversely affect the growth of organisms. The population of organisms whose development and growth has been retarded may be rapidly eliminated from the environment due to competition of food or predator. Therefore, water quality standards are required for protecting the organisms in the aquatic environment. What is the water quality standard? Water quality standard is created from the research on the toxicity of the chemicals on aquatic organisms. This research is known as bioassay, and is conducted in the laboratory. We have environmental acts and water quality standard. Both are to control the level of pollutants below the safety level for the aquatic environment. For example, the normal pH for aquatic organisms is between 6.5 to 8.5. So the discharge effluents should have pH value between this range if according to the standard. 4. Bioassay. Several terms are important to set the water quality standard. LC50. The concentration. I repeat, the concentration of pollutant that causes 50% mortality of the tested organism. LD50. The dose of pollutant that causes 50% mortality of the tested organism. IC50, the concentration of pollution that inhibits or reduces 50% growth rate of the organisms. EC50, the concentration of pollutant that has an effect on 50% of the organisms tested. For example, egg hatching rate, growth rate. Bioassay is the test where the potential toxicity of a chemical is examined, by using the tissue of an organism, typical organism, or a group of organisms. Normally, the acute toxicity test for an exposure period of 96 hours. The mortality rate obtained is utilized to establish a safety level for that particular substance. In bioassay experiment, several general guidelines need to be followed. For the testing organism, the organisms should be commercially important and sensitive to the environment. The organism must be easy to obtain and maintain in the laboratory. The biology, feeding behavior and ecology of the organism must be known. Use only healthy and disease-free organisms. Before use, the organisms should be acclimatized for at least two weeks. The mortality of organism in control tank should less than 10%, or if more than that, the experiment need to be repeated. The other criteria of bioassay test. The exposure period is between 48 to 96 hours. Normally scientists run the experiment for 96 hours. No feeding to the organisms while testing is conducted. The death of organisms are used as a criteria for the testing. This method is SFC, simple, fast, and cheap. For the environmental condition. We have to maintain the organism in similar environmental conditions as in the field or their habitat. Temperature changes in the testing solution should be minimal, 1 to 3 Celsius within 24 hours. The DO should be more than 5 mg per liter, pH 6.5 to 8.5, NH3 should be below 0.025 mg per liter. Other water quality parameters should be within the acceptable ranges for the growth of the organism. For the sample replication. Normally we use a minimal of 10 organisms per bioassay tank. Each tank, Three replicates per concentration will be used to obtain 95% confidence. And the organism should be randomly selected for the test. Department of Environment Malaysia has set water classes and their uses. Class 1. Conservation of the natural environment. Water supply 1. No treatment necessary. 
Class 2A, conventional treatment required. Class 2B, recreational use with body contact. Class 3, extensive treatment required before use. Class 4, only for irrigation. Class 5, none of the above. That is all for this chapter, Introduction to Aquatic Pollution. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.